putting our needs as humans before the needs of the business sometimes. And that can be a really difficult thing in a startup with a small team. Yeah. But insanely important. <laughs> You're listening to The Real You. Thoughts, ideas, and perspectives from the ordinary and all of us. My name is Dooley, and this podcast is in partnership with Pocket Change, the social platform built to show the real you. Yeah, I just want to hear your thoughts on funding from a just-to-try-shit standpoint. Mm. So I personally think as a startup, Mm. um, the key word that I always fall back on is scrappy. Mm. Like, how can you do the most with the least amount. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing that has allowed us to start up at a lower cost than other organizations is like, I'll give an example on a branding. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to a large branding agency and paying $15,000 for a branding package, which yes, it would look amazing. Mm -hmm. I went to my friend who is a graphic designer. I went to two friends and I was like, here's my idea. What can you throw together? They charged me at an hourly rate. And I was like, if you hit this certain amount of hours, like, let me know Mm -hmm. and we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a, I think that's one instance where you can, you know, you don't have to always go to the biggest, the best firm at the beginning. Like you can still get really great work for um, someone that's recently out of school that will charge you a fraction of what a a larger agency will cost you. Mm -hmm. Um, And same thing, like starting small batch to allow your cash flow to turn quicker. Mm -hmm. So after we started at our first initial brewery, we went to Woods Boss. They've got a 15 barrel brewing system, which is not gigantic in the world of brewing at all. Um, But allowing us to start on a small scale allowed for quick recipe tweaks any sort of can tweaks that we needed to make. So we weren't sitting on wasted inventory. Mm-hmm. Um, it's these small, like little scrappy pieces of like, maybe we're not ready to hire someone full-time, mm-hmm. but we can hire someone that's at their full-time job that works contract on nights and weekends. Mm-hmm. And so how do you start to flex things in your organization so that you're not dumping all of this money in right away? Yeah. And so there's that piece. And then I'll also say like, I am extremely grateful for like, my family has put some money into Hooch Booch and that's allowed me more freedom to bring on someone else and to grow our team. Because ultimately at the end of the day, you do have to spend money to make money. And so I'm not here saying like, don't spend, don't spend, don't spend. Mm -hmm. You have to spend, but spend smart. And on that piece, I think you can start to dream in a sense of like, if money were no object, what would I do? Mm-hmm. Think about it like that. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, okay, that's the goal. How do I bring it down to an obtainable level of an easy step of like, here's my first step into getting there, or here's how I could do that goal in a cheaper way. Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's how I feel about it. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm with that too. I've, I've discovered also, especially now and kind of from our modern age, there are so many people, platforms, ideas, different ways to essentially share your story that people are actually less bought into the like corporate, even corporate America itself is instantly, I say corporate America and everyone goes, Ugh, like to kind of corporatize yourself or have this brand that's overly pristine for the sake of doing all that. Um, I think people actually connect to a much more raw, authentic, thing where you can share your own story like hey look we're coming up with logos today look at oh feedback on this one feedback there instead of trying to pretend you're some major perfect company but actually staying true to where you are in the journey and people i think actually support those businesses more hence can then get the cycle of working your way up getting access to possibly more funding whether it be investment or making sales or or stuff like that um but mm-hmm. yeah, that's sort of where I've started to think about that. Like when people go straight to the, oh no, we don't have money. We can't do it. It's, well, share your story on what you want to do. And there's probably like-minded people out there that are willing to hear your story and, and all that sort of stuff. But basically, yeah, there's, there's a way to get there. It just, I'm the same boat as you of having this privilege of my parents supporting me financially through school and all that. And um, so it's hard for me to even speak on the topic because I was kind of born into a much more beneficial or opportune situation. But 
um, I found that it all comes from people and connecting with people, which the whole like network your net worth sort of thing is, yeah, but that can start on a daily basis, one-to-one -one friend and just people on the internet who like the shit you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah, on that note of what you were kind of talking about with like the behind the scenes, sort of like people like to see the raw unfiltered. Mm -hmm. I think we've seen a lot of success um, in our marketing and messaging using TikTok. And I know the platform, some people roll their eyes at. And mm -hmm. personally, I don't really even know how to use TikTok that well. <laughs> but it's basically like we'll string along videos from us at the brewery or like us trying to lift kegs that are like super heavy yeah. and like, yeah. like that. And like people buy into that, like people want to see what's happening behind the scenes and see that it's not all this like perfectly curated cocktail photo that maybe some large, large company would post. And yeah, we definitely have great photography and things like that too. But seeing also the raw unfiltered behind the scenes is like mm -hmm. super fun. And I feel like I look to other brands who are also doing that too. And so it's like, how do you start to find brands that you aspire to be like? Mm -hmm. and create that not only into your brand brand but into your personal brand too of like showing authenticity and showing like hey today was a shit day <laughs> yeah 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 that too because it's important and it's part of the process yeah no no I, 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 that's even this practice of me hopping on here is I'm extremely uncomfortable talking to recorded cameras for no apparent reason and so this in itself is literally a practice of me being like, how can I just start to show more of my thought process and talk to interesting people with cool stuff? It's like, this in itself is the exploring of, okay, on a day-to-day -day basis, I love to just do these kind of things and think about this stuff. And that's also where, from our pocket change thing, are leaning into how do we help share that more and bring that out, up uh, for people. Um, and so it's kind of a little cross combo of my own exploration in Thai with with what we're doing itself so um yeah it's been fun though. i feel like that's a way to actually not try and put on some brand but just be it's almost like be live the brand but even a brand itself these days are now like every human's a brand i have no idea how it, it, it's all it's all progressing but um but yeah i think it's super interesting so what about with your team and stuff like bringing on a team um working with people like how how has that experience been because I feel like that's regardless of the product or the brand or anything like that the team at the end of the day are the humans working together to create this thing like yeah well first of all we've got a super badass team here at Hooch Booch um and they've all been people that have reached out to me to be like hey I like what you're doing I want in and I think that's like one of the most authentic ways to get people right. It's intuitive. And as we continue to grow, I don't foresee that being always the case, but it's definitely a, a great position to be in. So um, our first and kind of second people are sort of similar timeline. And so um, a girl named Shannon, she's our director of ops. She works part-time, um, but during COVID, she lived in my same building. We'd go on walks around Wash Park every single day. And it was just like me spitballing about ideas about Hooch Booch. And she was like, I want to be involved in some capacity. I don't know what that looks like. Like, how can I get involved? And I was like, you can start with some contract work for free. <laughs> and so she did. Um, and she was just like helping me here and there whenever she kind of had the time and capacity to, and then just kind of like sharing ideas and thoughts. Um, and then our first full-time hire was, uh, in June of 2021, Gracie, she also went to DU with me. She was working in advertising at the time and I knew I needed help with sales and marketing. And so she started, um, also doing contract work at the beginning, uh, just like some social help here and there, um. And I think it's a good way to kind of test the waters and see like, is this person a good fit before bringing them on full time? And then she started in June and it's kind of been balls to the wall ever since that. And it's just been the two of us full time, full time. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, her job is sales and marketing, but it ends up being a lot, a lot. <laughs> it's also brewing and carrying the kegs. and <laughs> yeah, It's also far more than that. Yeah. Um, and then our next hire, we 
I just sent over the offer. Um, he's from Minnesota, so he'll be kind of a, a brand manager. Um, and that's just kind of a way for him to be able to do a lot of positions since he'll be the kind of only boots on the ground person in Minnesota. So basically handling everything as it pertains to the brand. So primarily sales, but then events, marketing, anything sort of like that. Um, and he uh, actually went to my high school and is a couple of years older and ju we just got connected through like word of mouth and here we are. So it's a lot of like things like that. And I think the most important thing, especially at a small company is communication, like a constant flow of communication. And I'm actually reading this book right now. It's called, I had to go look at the name, The Advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It talks about organizational health over organizational smarts mm -hmm. and how like you can have people that are smart in an organization, but if the organization doesn't function in a healthy way where people are having conversations and like vulnerable conversations of like, hey, I'm at my breaking point. Like I need some time mm -hmm. or like, hey, my family is going to be in town. I'd like to hang out and spend some time with them. Like having, mm -hmm. putting our needs as humans before the needs of the business sometimes. And that can be a really difficult thing in a startup with a small team. Yeah. But insanely important. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say, I think literally that's been the core of our survival as pocket change is prioritizing the long run over the day to day. Um, mm -hmm. It's like knowing that there's this collective trust and um ideas about what we want to accomplish and knowing that day to day if we burn ourselves out or feel like we're in a constant race to get there like putting that pressure on yourself is good and healthy but also something to keep an eye out for because all of a sudden if you stop enjoying what you're doing then it or people on your team it inevitably is destined to fail and so I, I think that is 1 million percent the number one thing is that communication and trust and then also just yeah being honest with yourself of listen I can't work 60 hours a week every week and this and that I have to take time when I want to go skiing and explore other passions I still have because in the long run this is something I know will get there um, but you know that's a fine balance for a lot of people too when it comes to money and timing and stuff so but that's also to each their own within a team so just recognizing that and communicating and seeing where everyone's at mm -hmm. i think that's especially important when it comes to a startup because i mean most times and this is true i think of a most startups is like you're gonna probably be paid less yeah but your work-life balance will probably be different you know and mm -hmm. i think a lot of startups offer more flexibility and that's like one thing that's super important at hooch Booch is like we say we're a work hard, play hard team. Like if you work your booty off and you want to go skiing one day, like I don't care mm -hmm. or like your family's in town or you've got a trip planned. Like mm -hmm. as long as the work gets done, it doesn't matter when the work gets done. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the important piece too, is just allowing for flexibility because especially in these times of COVID and mm -hmm. the world is an interesting place. It's important to, to give employees what they need to. Yeah, someone was saying, um, I don't know if it was the UK or something, had a, this was a couple of days ago, that like switched their standard to a four day work week or like are making that general yeah. like, um, from a like kind of cultural standpoint. And then um, I think about two, uh, there's a company here in Denver, this has been a huge inspiration of mine from their work, work culture um, standpoint. Um, the name's Digital as a company, but they've gotten constant rewards about their team sort of thing. And um, when I was talking with uh, one of the founder people of it, he was saying they had done a full um, shift to the four day week, but it was under the total collective kind of everyone on the team saying, hey, look, we think we can actually get our work done. We'd rather, if we're gonna be in the office, instead of pretending to be working or kind of just stay that extra 30 minutes at the end of the day to check off that you were there from nine to five, it's like, give us our shit while we're here. Let's just fucking nail it. Yeah. And we'd rather have Friday off or maybe we have to do a couple emails at home from nine to 10 to make sure we're all set. But um, yeah, I just found that was a super cool thing and a big, you know, they have 30, 40 people on their org to actually get everyone in on that um, is hard, but when everyone's kind of behind it and it feels right, um, it can definitely be possible too. It's just 
knowing your own strengths. Like if I'm going to be focused for an hour. I'd rather just nail it and not dilly dally just to say I'm here for an hour. Totally. It's a mindset shift. And I, I was totally in that boat at my last job. It was like a, you will be here from these hours. Yeah. 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 And sometimes your brain is just dead and you're like, I can't do any more work right now. Or like, I need to do something else. Or you're like, I actually don't really have any more work to do until something else comes in. Mm -hmm. So why am I sitting here pretending like I'm doing work? It's just such a silly way to climb. It's like, you could be going to the grocery store and grabbing your groceries, running other errands, like Mm -hmm. just make, make your schedule what works for you and get your work done. Like I love the idea of a four day work week. I mean, it sounds amazing. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's a little hard with the uh, event space and such. And, um, uh, you know, I don't know, it can be, we'll see, we'll see as society evolves with everything. Um, but yeah, also, so know you've got a, um, the eleven fifteen stops or any other kind of last little thing you want to talk about? I think we should wrap it here. Maybe a little plug for your site. <laughs> sure. I'll plug us. And then that's probably pretty good for now. We can always do like another one too. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to even think, what am I plugging? I mean, obviously, who should reach as a brand? Um, we just, uh, I guess we just launched a, a program called Taproom where you can order directly from our website for Denver delivery. Oh. It has most Denver zip codes. Um, so that's going on right now. You can get oh. it to your door same day in Denver. Um, so check that out at drinkhoochbooch.com. And- oh, I have to hop on that today. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you a discount code.